I am V. Prasanna Minayaridi, working as Assistant Professor in the Department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering College, Hyderabad. In this session, we are going to discussing about preemptive scheduling algorithms. So, preemptive. Preemptive means whenever any new process enter into the ready state, it gets the CPU by suspending the current leg temporarily and comparing the type of scheduling algorithm with the currently executing task. Here we are following the textbook is Introduction to Embedded System by Shibu K. So, this can be explained in different manners. Whenever any new process is entered into the ready state, the currently executing task is temporarily suspended and it is comparing with the new process which is entered into the ready state. Either based on priority, based on execution time or first in, first term. So, in this preemptive scheduling algorithms, three types of scheduling algorithms are there. First one is shortest job first scheduling algorithm. Second one, priority based scheduling algorithm. Third one, round robin based scheduling algorithm. First, shortest job first scheduling algorithm means the process which is having less execution time that is scheduled for execution first example. So, if you look at this example, it contains three processes P1, P2, P3 with estimate execution time 10 milliseconds, 5 milliseconds, 7 milliseconds enter into the ready queue together means at the same time first P1 entered, next P2 entered, next P3 entered at the same time. Okay. Next, a new process P4 with estimated completion time 2 milliseconds enters the ready state after 2 milliseconds means after the starting of execution of the process after completion of 2 milliseconds, a new process P4 enter into the ready state. Assume all the processes contains only CPU operations and no IO operations are involved here. So, calculate waiting time for each process and average waiting time. Similarly, calculate the turnaround time for each process and also calculate average turnaround time in this scheduling algorithm. First, so at the time of 0, the scheduler checks the ready state, what are the processes available in the ready state. So, at the beginning time, at the 0 at the time, there are three processes P1, P2, P3. Among this process, which process having less execution time? So, P2 is having less execution time. So, that is scheduled for execution first. Okay. So, first we scheduling P2 process. Since it is preemptive, keep in mind, it is pre M2 SJF, shortest job for scheduling algorithm. So, pre M2 means any new process enter into the ready state, suspend the currently executing task temporarily and compare the currently executing task with the new process. Okay. So, a, a new process P4 enter into the ready state at the time of 2 milliseconds. Okay. 
So at the time of second millisecond, P2 is suspended temporarily and compare this remaining execution time. Its remaining execution time is 3 milliseconds and new process execution time is 2 milliseconds. So among them, so P4 having less execution time. So P2 enter into the ready state again. Ready. Okay, so P2 enter into the ready state and P4 enter into the running state. So P4 execution time is 2 milliseconds. So 4 milliseconds. So P4 execution is completed. Again, the scheduler checks the ready state. What are the processes? available in the ready state at that time p1 p2 p3 available among them p2 having remaining execution time is 3 milliseconds remaining processor having 10 milliseconds and 7 milliseconds so among them p2 is having less execution time that is 3 milliseconds so that is 4 plus 3 7 milliseconds now Again, checks the ready state. So, what are the processes available in the ready state? Now, P1, P3 are available. Among these two, P1 and P3. So, which one having less execution time? P3, that is 7 millisecond. So, total. Fourteen milliseconds. Okay. Next, at the time of fourteenth millisecond, again checks the ready state. What are the processes available in the ready state? Among them, only P1 is available. That is scheduled for execution. So, what is the execution time of P1? Ten milliseconds. Means. Okay, so like this, we can schedule the process which will execute it. Now we can calculate. So waiting time for process P1. P1 is enter into the ready state at the time of zero, and it is scheduled for execution at the time of fourteenth millisecond. So, it is waiting 14 milliseconds in the ready state. Next, waiting time for process P2. So, P2 is enter into the ready state at the time of 0 and it is immediately scheduled for execution. So, 0 milliseconds plus again at the time of second millisecond. P2 is preempted by the P4 process. So it is entered into the ready state at the time of 2 millisecond. Again, it is entered into the running state at the time of 4th millisecond. So it is waiting in the ready state 2 milliseconds. So total 2 milliseconds. Next, waiting time for process P3. P3 is enter into the ready state at the time of 0 and it is scheduled for execution at the time of 7th millisecond. So totally it is waiting 7 milliseconds in the ready state for CPU. Next, waiting time. P4 enter into the ready state at the time of second millisecond 
and it is scheduled for execution immediately. So, it is waiting 0 milliseconds. Okay. So, the average waiting time is average. So, sum of all these by how many number of process? So, total like this. So, now that is equal to 5.75 milliseconds. Then Calculate the turn around time. So, turn around time for process P1. Turn around time means the time taken by the process for entering into the ready state to the completed state. So, P1 is entered into the ready state at the time of 0 and it is complete entered into the completed state at the time of 24th millisecond. So, total time is 24 milliseconds. Similarly, turn around time for process P2. So, P2 is entered into the ready state at the time of 0 and its execution is completed at the time of 7th millisecond. Total 7 milliseconds. Next, for process P3, P3 is entered into the ready state at the time of 0 and it is scheduled for execution at the time of 14th millisecond. So, total duration is 14 milliseconds. Next. Turn around time for process P4. P4 enter into the ready state at the time of second millisecond and its execution is completed at the time of fourth millisecond. So, total duration is 2 milliseconds. Now, we can calculate average turn around time equal to sum of all these times by number of process. Equal to Forty seven by four that is equal to average turnaround time for this requirement in preemptive scheduling uh, shortage of a scheduling algorithm is eleven point seven five milliseconds. Okay. In this manner we can check how much time the processor waiting, average waiting time and average turnaround. Next, priority based scheduling algorithm. Suppose, if any process enter into the ready state, the currently executing process is temporarily suspended and compare the priority of the currently executing task with the new process entered into the ready state. So, based on the highest priority corresponding task is scheduled for execution. In this manner, we can schedule the process. So, 
let us consider one example here three processes p1 p2 p3 with estimate execution time 10 milliseconds 5 milliseconds 7 milliseconds and their priorities are 1 3 2 here 0 is the highest priority 3 is the lowest priority 0 highest priority 3 is the lowest priority okay so these are entered into the ready queue together in the order means at a time P1, P2, P3 entered, first P1 entered, next P2 entered, next P3 entered at the same time. And a new process P4 with estimated time 6 milliseconds and priority 0. So enter into the ready state after 5 milliseconds of start of the P1. Okay. So calculate average turnaround time, average waiting time for each process. Okay, we need to check this one. So, first we consider three processes P1. So, first write the scheduling algorithm. Which scheduling algorithm you are following? Preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. Preemptive priority based. Scheduling algorithm. Here we are taking three processes P1, P2, P3. With estimate execution time 10 milliseconds, 5 milliseconds, 7 milliseconds. And the priority, sir, 1, 3, 2. 1, 3, 2. Okay. And a new process P4 with estimated time 6 milliseconds and priority 0 enter into the ready state after 5 milliseconds execution of process P1. Okay. Now we can schedule. Ready state, running state, completed state. Data, block state. Okay. Now, at the time of zero. at the time of 0. So, what are the processes available in the ready state? P1, P2, P3. Among them, so since we are following preemptive priority, so which one is highest priority? I am already saying 0 is the highest priority. Highest. 3 is the lowest priority okay hmm. so 1 3 2 among them one is the highest priority so one is scheduled for execution p1 so its execution time is 10 milliseconds okay keep in mind at the time of 5 millisecond a new process P4 enter into the ready state. Okay. At that time, P1 is suspended temporarily and compare the priority of the P1 with the new process P4. So, P1 priority is 1, P4 priority is 0. Among this P1 and P4, P4 is the highest priority. So, P4 is scheduled for execution.
and P1 enter into the ready state. So P4 execution time is 6 milliseconds. So 11 milliseconds. At the time of 11th millisecond. Again, we can check the ready state. What are the processes available in the ready state? P1, P2, P3. Among them, which one is highest priority? P1. So, P1 is scheduled for execution. Its remaining execution time is 5 milliseconds. So, 16 milliseconds. Okay. Next, at the time of 16th millisecond, again the scheduler checks the ready state. What are the processes available in the ready state? P2, P3. So, among P2, P3, P3 is the highest priority. P3 priority is 2. Okay. So, that is scheduled for execution. Its execution time is 7 milliseconds. So, 16 plus 7. Twenty three milliseconds. Okay. Next, at the time of twenty three millisecond, again checks the ready state. What are the processes available in the ready state? Only P two is available, so P two is scheduled for execution. Okay. Now, we can calculate waiting time for process P1. So, P1 is entered into the ready state at the time of 0 at millisecond and it immediately scheduled for execution. And at the time of 5th millisecond, process P1 is preempted by the process P4. So, P1 is entered into the ready state at the time of 5th millisecond. Again, it is scheduled for execution at the time of 11th millisecond. So, this much of duration PV is waiting. So, 0 milliseconds plus here it is waiting 6 milliseconds. Total 6 milliseconds. Okay. Next. Waiting time for process P2. Process P2 enter into the ready state at the time of 0 and it is scheduled for execution at the time of 23 millisecond. So, P2 is waiting in the ready state up to 23 milliseconds. Next, waiting time for Process P3. P3 is enter into the ready state at the time of 0 and it is scheduled for execution at the time of 16th millisecond. So, total waiting time for process P3 for getting the CPU is 16 milli seconds. Next, waiting time for process P4. Process P4 enter into the ready state at the time of 50 millisecond and it is scheduled for execution immediately. So, 0 milliseconds, it is waiting in the ready state. So, average waiting time is 0.5. So, sum of all these waiting times by number of process.
so that is equal to eleven point two five milliseconds. Okay. Now we can calculate turnaround time. Turnaround time means the time taken by the process which enters into the ready state to the completed state. Okay, so process P one enters into the ready state at the time of zero, and it is complete. Its execution is completed at the time of twenty three milliseconds. So total duration is twenty three. Sorry, sixteenth millisecond. Next, turn around time for process P two. P two enter into the ready state at the time of zero eight millisecond, and its execution is completed at the time of twenty eight millisecond. So total turn around time is twenty eight milliseconds. Next turnaround time for process P three that is equal to so process P three enter into the ready state at the time of zero and its execution is completed at the time of twenty three milliseconds total time is twenty three milliseconds. Okay, next turnaround time for process P four that is equal to P four enter into the ready state at the time of fifth millisecond and its execution is completed at the time of eleventh millisecond. So total time is six milliseconds. Average turn around time is equal to sum of all these turn around times of the process by number of process. So average turnaround time for this requirement in this preemptive priority scheduling algorithm is eighteen point two five milliseconds. Like this, we can calculate the average turnaround time and average waiting time for this requirement in this scheduling algorithm. Next, round robin based. scheduling algorithm round robin means it follows the first in first out structure and each process getting equal time period for executing the process or equal chances of getting the cpu 
that is called timer tick equal time period is called timer tick let us consider one example so we are considering three processes p1 p2 p3 with estimated completion time 6 milliseconds 4 milliseconds 2 milliseconds enter into the ready state together in the order first p1 entered next p2 entered next p3 entered calculate waiting time and turnaround time for each process and also calculate average waiting time and average turnaround time here assume no io operations okay here time slice is 2 milliseconds means each process executing 2 milliseconds every time like that we can schedule you can check this one first so at the time of zero ready state running state completed state this is preemptive round robin based scheduling algorithm waiter Okay. So at the time of zero, the scheduler checks the ready state. What are the processes available in the ready state which are ready for execution? Those are P one, P two, P three. So among them, which process enter into the ready state first? P one is entered first. So that is scheduled for execution. Okay, since round robin means here we are giving two milliseconds time period. So each process is executed with equal time periods. So first P one executing two milliseconds. Next, again P one enter into the ready state. Again remaining process P two. P two is scheduled for execution. Only two milliseconds. So each process. Executing equal time periods in the first in first out order. So next, at the time of fourth millisecond, again the scheduler checks the ready state. So P three is entered next. So P three is executed two milliseconds. Means yes, six milliseconds. At the time of sixth millisecond. Again, the scheduler checks the ready state. What are the process available? P one, P two, P three execution is two milliseconds. That execution is completed. That is enter into the completed state. So remaining process are P one, P two. Okay. So among which process enter into the ready state first? P one entered. So P one is scheduled for execution. Eight millisecond. Next, P two is entered. The execution time is remaining execution time is two milliseconds. So the two milliseconds is executed. Next, so P two execution is complete. Next again P one only there. So P one execution is. Okay. Now we can calculate waiting time for each process. For process P one. So P one is enter into the ready state at the time of zero, and it is scheduled immediately. So waiting time zero. Next, at the time of two milliseconds, it is enter into the ready state. And it is waiting for CPU until sixth millisecond. So total, this is 
4 milliseconds. Again, at the time of 8 millisecond, it is vendor into the ready state and it is scheduled for execution at the time of 10th millisecond. So, total 2 milliseconds waiting in the ready state. So, total duration is 6 milliseconds. Next, waiting time for process P2. So, P2 is entered into the ready state at the time of 0 and it is scheduled for execution at the time of 2 milliseconds. So, it is waiting 2 milliseconds in the ready state. Again, at the time of 4th millisecond, the P2 is preempted by P3 and it is scheduled for execution at the time of 8th millisecond. So, the waiting time is 4 milliseconds. Total 6 milliseconds. Next, waiting time for process P3. P3 is entered into the ready state at the time of 0 8th millisecond and it is scheduled for execution at the time of 4th millisecond. So, it is waiting 4 milliseconds and its execution is completed. So, total 4 milliseconds. So, average waiting time is sum of all these waiting times by individual or number of process. Five point three three milliseconds. Next, turn around time for process P one is equal to turn around time means the time taken by the process for entering into the ready state to the completed state. So P one is entered into the ready state at the time of zero eight millisecond, and it is entered into the completed state at the time of 12th millisecond. Total duration is 12 milliseconds. Next, P2. P2 is entered into the ready state at the time of 0 and its execution is completed at the time of 10th millisecond. Total time is 10 milliseconds. Similarly, process P3. Turn around time for process P3. Process P3 enter into the ready state at the time of 0. Its execution is completed at the time of 60 millisecond. Total duration is 6 milliseconds. So, average turnaround time is sum of all these turnaround times of each process by number of process. So, average turnaround time is equal to 9.33 milliseconds. Like this, this is by using preemptive round robin based scheduling algorithm, we can calculate the average turnaround time and average waiting time. So, the advantage is uh, easy to design. The limitation is if you are waiting for all this process means it takes much time to complete a particular task. If any highest priority task is there, 
it takes much time there is a limitation if you compare the scheduling algorithms in case of priority based scheduling algorithm advantage is we are executing highest priority task so that is best the limitation is while executing the highest priority task if any new process with the higher than the currently executing task it always preempted the currently executing task that is called starvation okay that takes much time to complete its execution that is one of the limitation in case of that is starvation so if any highest priority task is coming into the ready state the currently executing task is postponed that is the problem similarly in case of shortest job for scheduling algorithm also here also the advantage is average turnaround time is very less when comparing with remaining executing task but the limitation is if any new process which is having less execution time that is always preempts the currently executing task means the currently executing task is postponed every time there is a problem there is a limitation here so based on the requirement we can compare the cpu utilization time turn around time and average waiting time all these things we can define decide which scheduling algorithm is best suitable for particular requirement thank you. like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates